it going down? <laughs> What's like in, in the next 35 seconds, what is like the most hyper advanced feature that someone's used on a board? Cause I've, I feel like digging in this V mug, like I've started to hit, you know, a deeper tier of apps and what have you. Again, this is Tanya Janelle. I've just started using the uh, Jira integration. Oh. So for IXD diagrams, and that has been a lifesaver for like communication with dev, and it just makes everything go so quickly. It's, it's amazing. Oh, killer, like, man. You should like take a screenshot of whatever you got and drop it, I don't know, somewhere. Yeah, I'd be happy to share with you guys. I'm actually yeah. going through obsessively trying to find you all on LinkedIn. <laughs> oh, that's okay. <laughs> Awesome. All right. Well, I think the time is. Um, everyone can see my sh uh, screen share on the Zoom app, I take it? Sure can. Beautiful. All right. Well, a pleasure. Welcome to the first e official VMUG, an acronym that stands for Virtual Hyphen Miro User Group, O one accordingly enough for the first. Um, thank you all for joining us. My name is Kyle Chipman. I'm calling in from Chipman Design Architecture, uh, just outside Chicago, Illinois. And this is great. Uh, quick story on kind of how we got here. Um, the lovely Brittany Koshera, who, as you can see, um, potentially in your Zoom waving, uh, met up with her at the launch party, Paolo, uh, a little couple months back, and she put forth, hey, I'd love to get a user group going, rounded up a couple of really energized power users, and um, in that moment, special shout out to John White, Annie McLeod, uh, Matthew Stevens, Kyle Carline, John Murray, um, and of course, Ms. Melissa Halem from Mira, who will be presenting shortly. Um, the big thrust of this, as we go through the experience, the goal is that more and more users kind of form their own virtual user groups and host their own. So if you feel inspired uh, throughout this presentation to, hey, I got this great idea, I got this great template or this board I want to share, um, re please reach out to Brittany uh, at the end. And that's, that's the goal is that we start spinning these up once a month. Um, so a couple of kind of expectations and ground rules before jumping off. Uh, the first is that we're going to be hopping and sharing screens from presenter to presenter. Um, I'll talk through the icebreaker first, and then Melissa will take over to talk through some sticky, feet, sticky note enhancements from Miro. Uh, Matthew Stevens from the Zebra will then take over for design sprints. And finally, we'll close out with a voting section on the templates that have been shared. So we do ask that everyone uh, mute your microphones if you're not presenting, because we'll probably have more and more people rolling in throughout the, the user group. Um, Definitely, though, the goal is that we just drive interaction, interactivity, collaboration in the spirit of Miro as a platform. So as we go through the presentation sections, you'll notice that there are lanes. Um, the frames will be shared by the user, but there is a lane above both Melissa and Matthew's presentations where you can drop sticky notes, kind of as questions occur to you, hey, how do you do this? What do you think about this solution? Um, Annie and John will be reviewing those questions. And when Melissa and Matthew's presentations wrap, they will be asking them and fielding those. Um, everyone will also be sticking around afterwards. So if you have any follow-up questions, feel free to um, hit up Melissa or Matthew directly. Um, let me think what else I took, a couple more notes. Um, ah, yes, uh, there will also be a couple of voting sections. Uh, those will be called out by the presenters or myself. And Kyle Carline, thank you again for administering those voting sections. Um, I'm going to skip right now down to the icebreaker. And this was super satisfying to see everybody uh, kind of pop off on this guy. So I really, this I feel like is a great starting point where we can all begin to connect, collaborate. If you see someone in your area, you see someone who's also been a power user or even a new user, and you want to interact with them, feel free to drop a reply on the comment. Um, partly why they've all been shown, actually, I'm actually gonna hide the cursors because I get kind of stressed out too, seeing them all. Um, Partly why the comments were all shown as resolved. So you can go ahead and hide them, find someone in your area, resolve them. And if you do reply, it will open that comment thread back up and notify the person. So feel free to use this as a launching pad. And while we're in it as well, if you've not had a chance to drop your pin and name an organization on there, please do so. Uh, perfect. I'm going to go ahead and toss it over to Melissa. All right. Thanks so much. Kyle, I'm going to share my screen now. Can you guys all see my screen? Sure can. All right, great. I'm just gonna set this up here. 
All right. So, um, yeah, I am really excited that um, we're all able to kind of gather for this first virtual user group. Um, I'm trying to make sure that this right screen is in place. Can you guys only see my Miro board or can you see my desktop too? Nope, just the Miro board. Great. Yeah. Thanks so much. So anyways, I'm really excited to be here. Um, this is great. I've been hearing all about this from Brittany and worked with uh, Kyle too. Um, and uh, I'm just, uh, I'm just so pleased to see everyone kind of go in there. Um, and it's awesome to see how everyone's kind of jumped in, selected their favorite Disney princess or not. Um, but today I really wanted to talk to you about something that we're all pretty familiar with. So let's dive right in and let's do it for the love of sticky notes. So first things first, um, as you know, my name is Melissa. I'm on the product and customer marketing team here at Miro. So I have the pleasure of being on Brittany's team. I've gotten to hear all of the exciting discussions that you've had. Um, and more specifically, I manage um, the enterprise product marketing side of things. So I work a lot with sales, success, marketing. And essentially, we're trying to get Miro into the hands of every single person within an enterprise organization to really enable cross-functional collaboration. That's the goal. So I just wanted to start off with a quick poll, um, and I believe there's someone that's going to enable this. Um, and I wanted to ask, do you use physical sticky notes? And what you can do is just click on the sticky note to cast your vote. And we'll set a timer and make sure everyone has the chance to go ahead and vote. Looks like it's going. I see it's counting down 40 seconds. Oh, shoot. Oops. I just ended it. Wait, no, I didn't. Good. See a couple of cursors floating around. Are we good? Yeah, it's showing the uh, results are processing. Okay, great. Yeah, so it looks like we hit uh, eight yeses and two noes. All right, so we have a majority here. Not super surprising, so let's go on to the next one really quickly. Second thing, do you have the exciting job of dealing with the aftermath of using physical sticky notes? What I've dubbed chief sticky officer. So just simple yes, no question here again. We could probably shorten this one if we have 30 seconds on the clock. Some votes coming in. Last 10 seconds. If this has been a hard poll for you, you can now choose and have a 50-50% chance. <laughs> All right, looks like things are processing. Do we have the results in? The four, yes, wins again. Okay, there we go. All right, well, not super surprising, but I did wanna go over something um, really, really awesome that I think a lot, of, um, a lot of users of Miro don't actually really know about. 
um, because there is actually a better way to transition from physical to digital sticky notes. Um, so here it is. We actually have um, a sticky recognition feature within Miro. Um, and essentially, uh, you can use whatever sticky notes um, that you would like, either digital or physical in Miro. But if you are using physical sticky notes, especially for design sprints um, in person, or you like to personally use them, um, you can actually just easily take a photo of them, either with your mobile phone or you can upload an image. And you can actually digitize those sticky notes. And you can place them on the board just like you would using digital sticky notes in Miro itself. You can categorize, arrange, um, move them along as a team. And essentially what this becomes is, again, a, a living document for you to reference throughout the entire process from ideation all the way to execution. So to give you a live look at what that might look like, um, here's just a clip from kind of the mobile app where we're able to take a photo right within the app. It will load and identify the stickies. You can move around the contours and essentially you can place them on your board. As far as desktop goes, if say you have a photo that you've already taken, you don't have to use the app, you can upload it straight away right onto the board. So in your toolbar there on the left hand side, you'll see that sticky recognition icon um, and you can go ahead and upload your image. Um, so same thing here, you can um, kind of uh, choose the borders if you need to uh, refine them a little bit and then add it to your board really easily at any place. And really it is as simple as three steps. But wait, there's more. I'm pulling a Billy Mays on you. Rest in peace, Billy Mays. So coming soon, we actually have a, an updated version of the sticky note recognition where you will actually be able to fully digitize your sticky notes. So if you have essentially anything written on your sticky notes, it will completely digitize them. And now you have a fully editable digital sticky note. And this is great because again, it makes the transition from kind of analog to digital really seamless. But the power really is in being able to utilize a lot of the functionality that we have along with digital sticky notes within Miro. So for instance, and I'm sure some of you are probably using this today, um, once you can go from the physical to digital sticky note, you can essentially go ahead and shuffle them around and you can tag them they become searchable as well. Um, so if you haven't tried that, all of the text, including the tags are searchable. They'll highlight in the upper right hand corner um, where you'll see the magnifying glass. And I actually pulled a lot of these um, straight from a retrospective that we did uh, pretty recently with our brand team and marketing team. Um, and so you can kind of see here that the ability to pull these in, tag them, make sure that you know who actually left the comment or left um, the piece of feedback is made very clear and you don't ever have to fight over uh, your color of sticky note because I know uh, people can get quite territorial about that. Um, so you kind of have the freedom to use tags however you please. The second thing that I wanted to highlight is that now that you have editable um, sticky notes, uh, digital sticky notes, you can actually convert them into different uh, formats within Miro. So one powerful feature is the ability to convert them into cards and cards gives you the ability to essentially add more information here in a description and you can actually tag it as well. You can at mention or um, tag someone and add an assignee here. And then as well, you can use um, the calendar functionality to place a deadline. The other thing here, and I heard the mention of using JIRA, uh, the JIRA integration is that you can actually convert stickies into JIRA tasks. So once you have this integration enabled, it becomes really easy to be able to visually um, manage and collaborate with your dev team, um, your engineering team, your design team, product team, and essentially you can um, have the ease of access visually and collaboratively to do this in Miro instead of in JIRA. And then of course, if you're creating flowcharts, then it really becomes easy to convert them into different shapes. But if you are still going to use physical sticky notes, which we will not judge you for, I wanted to leave you with some parting words that you should think side to side and not bottom to top. And what I mean by that is when you're peeling off a sticky note off of a pad, 
there's kind of this, uh, I wouldn't call it a trick, but the best practice is to peel from the side at the top where the glue is, because um, essentially once you post it, um, it'll, it'll actually lay flat. And if you do that bottom to top, it actually curls up. So if you are going to use physical sticky notes, try it this way. It'll actually make it really easy to, to capture it um, either with the mobile app in Miro or taking a photo of it and then converting it to a digital sticky note. And I did want to leave um, some parting gifts here. So I wanted to highlight that we do have a Miro Academy. Um, this will go through some of the fundamentals of Miro um, that you probably uh, might already be familiar with, but it does go through some kind of critical components. And sometimes, um, you know, we just don't have time to discover all that you can do within a product within Miro. And this is a great way to get started. And if you want to learn more about um, the sticky note recognition, I did link out a knowledge base article here that you can reference as well. And that's all. Wonderful. So, Thank you. Are there any uh, questions, John? Questions. There are indeed. Um, so number one would be um, coming soon for this feature to digitize the sticky notes. Uh, when are we talking? When are we talking? I know, right? That's the ballpark. <laughs> ballpark. We're looking at a couple weeks. So um, it's very close. Um, we will definitely let you know when that comes out, but it's in the next few weeks. Great. Okay, uh, there's one other question and maybe while I'm reading that and you are answering, uh, folks can take a minute to consider. We could have time for a couple more questions. Um, considering the Miro Academy, it looks like we're being asked, would this be good for onboarding new users? Um, so I take it if um, you, know, you were working with some new people in the team, would that be the first place to send them to get familiar? Absolutely, um, that's exactly the whole purpose and reason we decided to create the Miro Academy. So definitely point them to that. Um, it's just Miro.com slash backslash academy and we'll have a series of videos that are actively being worked on, um, but definitely should send new, new users that way. Great, and it looks like um, someone said they're gonna have their team go there, so that's great. Uh, we got another question coming in. How do you enable convert to card? Convert to card, okay. Um, so actually I can go ahead and do this here. Um, so if you have a sticky note, um, I actually have to go out of presentation mode here. So if you just click on a sticky note, you'll see this icon here and it's a, it says switch type. So you can easily click that and it converts it right into a card. Um, so similarly, um, you can convert it into other formats here using any of these. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and there looks like there was one more and it's a pretty serious one. Will you be putting 3M out of business? Ooh, I don't know, this is recorded, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can say that. <laughs> we can I, was, certain... <laughs> I was very careful to say sticky note and not the other name. Right, absolutely. It's like I... facial, facial tissue and Kleenex, right? <laughs> Well, that was uh, very informative for me. I think that's all the questions we have for now. If there are other ones, we'll make sure they get posted on the board and can be answered over time. And uh, for me, the biggest, um, the biggest learning was definitely that side to side, not bottom to top. That's a life, that's a game changer right there. <laughs> John, it looks like we have a question in the chat within Zoom. Oh, okay. Can you see that? Oh, um, okay. Yeah, we did have a question come in there for one more for Melissa. So how deep is the integration between Jira and Miro? Uh, which info is synced back and forth? Ooh, that is a good question. Um, I will tell you that it is a bi-directional sync. So if you go back to the Jira card here, and for the purposes of today, um, I do not have this uh, hooked up. Uh, we're in a different account here, so it's actually just an image. But if you are actually going into your account and you have the integration enabled, whatever it is that you um, change here within kind of this headline section and the description will be kind of mapped back to um, the issue in those certain fields. And there will be a bi-directional sync. And as you can see here, um, although this is a screenshot here, I did pull this from our actual account where we do have um, a sandbox um, where I'm kind of integrated. Uh, I have that integrated there and you can see um, it does pull in kind of the essentials here. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Melissa. Um, I think, Matthew, if you want to take on right. and walk through how your team at the Zebra uses Miro and Design Sprints. Yeah. 
Hi. Um, let me share my screen. Maybe. Um, I'll start by saying that that sticky note like trek. Uh, I brought that up in a leadership meeting a couple of weeks ago and was promptly made fun of by the other people in the room <laughs> because of my ability to uh, to use stickies in that way. But it's true. It's a good it's a good trick. Um, hi everyone. Uh, thanks for having me. Thanks for the organizers um, for for setting this up. Thank you, Kyle, for getting all of my content together for me. Um, I'm a huge fan. Um, I'm super excited to kind of show you how we at the Zebra use use Miro for uh, for design sprints specifically, but we really we use it for everything um, from retros. Um, we do a lot of heuristic evaluations. We we do everything. We have trading cards for our team. So when you start on the team, um, we ask that you fill out a trading card with like your name and your personality type and like favorite time of day to work and like things like that. Um, before I get started, um, I think Kyle mentioned this earlier, but if you have questions, you can post them um, in, the, in the, the frame above where I'm at. And then if you have examples that you'd like to share, there's, there's space below this as well. Um, there's also a link to my Medium article. I wrote um, an article last year with a little bit more detail around um, how we run design sprints with remote stakeholders and Miro is a huge part of it. Um, but it also includes like all the supplies that we use and other things as well. Um, a little bit of background. My name is Matthew Stevens. Sorry, I should have started with that. I'm the VP of design at the Zebra. Um, the Zebra is, the way we pitch it is kayak for auto insurance. Um, so we're, um, we're an insurance comparison marketplace. And um, it's, it's an interesting, um, interesting company. So auto insurance is unique in that it is required by everyone to buy and very few people understand what they are buying and it's just impossible to understand for people and so from a design perspective it's a it's a really unique challenge and in, in that we yeah we're trying to solve people's problems and get them the best price um but at the same time these people are being forced to buy something which is always an interesting caveat so on day one of joining this company i was tasked with redesigning the product um, and before design sprints came along, that process would have been months of discovery meetings and back and forth with stakeholders. And just, you know, for me, I, I needed to learn about insurance. I didn't know anything about insurance. So there's just like a lot of, a lot of um, just back and forth um, within the design process. So really what uh, I can kind of introduce, you know, what a design sprint is, it's really, um, and you can see it on this slide, it's a technique to quickly solve design problems, test the viability of solutions. But the really like core of it is to get everyone aligned on what the problem is, what success looks like, what failure looks like, what questions we're trying to answer, what assumptions we're trying to make. Um, and then from there kind of, um, the process over here, it's, so it's understand, diverge, converge, prototype, um, and um, test. So understanding, and we'll go into this in a little bit more detail, but it's essentially understanding the problem, diverging. So diverging in, in, in this sense means going and looking and seeing how other people are solving this problem. Um, converging is bringing all those ideas back together and coming up with a solution together as a team. Um, and then building a prototype and actually testing it with users. So the idea is that we can validate or invalidate an idea very quickly. Um, the sprint is meant to be um, five days. So um, Monday is understand and Friday is testing. Um, it's great from the design perspective in that we get other people's point of view um, and we get other people's input throughout. And really what the side effect of that is that we create advocates on behalf of, of the solution that we came up with. Um, so often designers will come back with mock-ups or prototypes and they have done it all on their own and the stakeholders immediately are confused and you know there's just like the alignment happens so infrequently that 
um, that you get off off track very easily. And so design sprints are really supposed to just, it's meant to get everyone in the same room and align and, and solve the problem together. Where things kind of break down, at least for us, and I think for a lot of companies, is we have a lot of remote stakeholders. Um, our CEOs in Connecticut, we have a team in New York, we have people in Colorado. So we, it was really hard for us to do, so a lot of this stuff is whiteboarding, sticky notes, um, voting, sticker voting, things like that. So there's a lot of like back and forth, um, which is great if everyone's in the same room, but if they're not, it becomes really hard. Um, so that's kind of where Miro came in for us. Um, and it's just like the perfect solution for this problem. Um, so yeah, just to kind of finish up this slide, what, what to expect at the end of a design sprint, um, really having the team understand the problem and validated and either validating or invalidating the, the solution that everyone came up with. Um, if it's invalidated, then you can just run another design sprint or come up with something else. And then if it's validated, great, you just move forward and, and that's that. Um, one second. So this is, um, this is the core um, template um, for, for our design sprints. This is, this is um, day one. Um, this is the discovery board. So as you can see, we have, um, we, we have the problems at the top, um, success metrics, failure metrics, sprint questions, and assumptions. Um, when we go through problems, um, oftentimes what we start, so we kind of go around the room and everyone kind of says like what they think the problem is and we discuss it as a group. Um, and a lot of times we find that what we thought was the problem was really just the symptom of the problem. Um, and so one thing that's really helpful for us is um, doing an exercise called five whys. And it's kind of like a, like a toddler or a young kid who just keeps asking why like over and over and over. Um, but it's really meant to kind of get to the root of, of the problem that you're trying to solve. Um, success and failure metrics. Um, the only real rule that we have around those is that they're measurable, um, that they're kind of, if you've ever heard of smart goals, so they're like um, simple, measurable, you know, I can't remember all the rest, but like just the main one is measurable. So for a success metric for us would be, you know, 10% increase in engagement or 5% increase in conversion. Um, sprint questions are really when we have questions that we can't answer right now, um, we, we list them here. Um, and the idea is that when we leave this meeting, um, we can go and answer those questions and come back to the next meeting with, with some answers. Same thing with assumptions. Um, so with assumptions, it starts with, you know, we've assumed that um, whatever users want a purple button. Um, we're going to test that by, um, you know, doing an AB test between a purple button and a black button. And we're going to validate that if conversion goes up. Um, and so we start listing, we, we list those all here. And again, we, we try to try to answer those assumptions before the next meeting if possible or at least before the end of the sprint. Um, so this is what, yeah, so this is kind of the filled out version of the board. Um, the piece that I didn't mention is we all decide on, on one problem, one success metric and one failure metric before we move on. Um, so for this example, this was um, from our homepage redesign that happened last year. Um, so the problem that we chose was that we don't know what would encourage people to use the application. Um, success metrics for us was visitor to app visitor conversion. So an app visitor is just someone that, you know, enters our funnel basically. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of that. Um, so, this is another, um, this looks crazy, but 
I'll kind of explain it. Um, we use sticky notes um, and we do what are called how might we notes. Um, so the idea of how might we notes is that you're trying to frame a problem as an opportunity. So instead of saying the phone number is invisible, the how might we would be, how might we keep the phone number visible for users? Um, it really just kind of, thank you. Um, it really aligns everyone um, and just keeps things positive. So throughout the sprint process, we encourage everyone to be writing how might we notes the entire time. And this is something that, it, that we've taken out of design sprints and we use it in all kinds of different meetings. Um, and then we do some um, uh, kind of affinity mapping, but we, we, group, we group ideas together that are, this, that are similar. And then we post them on this matrix, matrix of priority and effort. So the x-axis here is like from left to right, it goes high priority or low pri to low priority. And then the y-axis is low effort to high effort. And you can't really see the labels, they're kind of being um, covered up, but really you're, you're looking for this top left quadrant. Um, those are what we call quick wins. So they're low effort, high priority. Um, it's just a really good way to prioritize what you want to, to focus on. Um, the top right, we call it fill-in jobs. The bottom left, we call major projects because those are high effort, but also high priority. And then bottom right is ones we really want to avoid. So those are low priority and high effort. And we, we're constantly going back to this um, throughout the process, um, as we see. So um, from there, we do lightning demos. Um, so this is where we kind of go and look, oh no. Um, we go and look and see how other people are solving the problem that we're trying to solve. So in this case, we are looking at other people's home pages. Um, so, you know, some of our competitors are here. Uh, we always use uh, Lemonade, which is like renter's insurance. They, we think they do a really good job. Um, but there's also some unrelated ones like Spotify, Netflix, TurboTax, things like that. Um, while we're doing this, we're writing how might we notes um, and in general, just writing down things that we like or don't like about the things that we're, we're looking at. Um, from there, we create a user map or a user story. Um, we list the actors on the left. So for us, we have these three personas, the low price hunter, the savvy nomad, and the protection seeker. Um, pretty straightforward, low price owner, really concerned about price, not really worried about, you know, the add-ons and the, and the um, roadside assistance and things like that. Um, and then we kind of lay out um, what, the, what the journey looks like. So this one's really basic, but it's the user learning about the zebra, they're visiting the homepage, they enter in the application, they view results, and they buy a policy. Um, and then we choose a target. So we choose a target persona or actor, and then we choose a target moment within that. Um, so since we're doing the homepage, it's pretty straightforward. We wanted to, to focus on that, that moment in the journey. Um, yeah, so this is, this is day three now. Um, lighting demos um, was, was day two. So day three is really the converging day. Um, so we start with a series of um, exercises. Uh, so we spend, we spend time where we just go around either the physical room where we've done it, but more often than not, it's really just looking at our Miro board. Um, and everyone kind of takes notes on their own of like ideas that they might have. And um, it's really meant to just be a brainstorming session and just, you're just trying to generate as, as many ideas as you can. Um, from there, we do an exercise called Crazy Eights. Um, so either um, if you have a physical piece of paper, you just fold it three times so that you get four squares and you spend a minute per square just like just thinking of ideas, a different idea um, for each square. Um, choose the one you like the best and then this is 
this is where this is what you look at for the next or this is what you're looking at for the last round so this is what we call solution sketching um, you're taking three sticky notes and you are either creating a storyboard of three frames or three parts of the same page um, but the idea is that you 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 choose your best idea you you write it down you give it a title um, and you put it down on paper and then so we post them up on the wall and um, well, that's how we used to do it. Now we do what you're looking at, which is what we take pictures. So if we have remote stakeholders, they can do this stuff on, on a piece of paper and then take a picture, send it or post it on the board. Um, and then um, this was created before the voting plugin was actually added. So you'll see these red circles everywhere. We were using those to vote, like sticker voting. Um, now we, um, we we use the voting plugin more than anything. But the nice thing about using these red circles is that you can vote on very specific items within the, the sketch. Um, and so you see, we kind of get this like heat map effect where you see where the dots are all being consolidated. And so from there, we kind of talk about each of those and decide whether or not we want to include them um, in our final sketch. And so the final sketch looks similar to this. Um, for our homepage, we wanted to do two different versions, like a short version and a long version. And we just wrote it down on a whiteboard and took a picture. Um, I saw some really cool wireframe templates. I think it would be really easy to use something like that within Miro. Um, but either way, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, and then from there we post our mock-ups. Um, and this was, this isn't our current homepage anymore, but this is kind of where we landed. Um, and so we post it here so that we always have kind of reference back to it. Um, and so I kind of glossed over the last half of that, but a big piece of it too is research. Um, so we have research, we start every design sprint with um, a clip of a user really struggling with the problem that we're trying to solve. Um, and then once we've kind of come up with this mock-up, we build a very basic prototype and, um, <laughs> and then our research team goes and actually does some user testing with, um, with the prototype. They come back to this, this team and they say, you know, we think this is the right direction. We think maybe we want to change some things or no, no one understood this. We got to try something else. And then at that point, we, we either, we either decide to do another sprint or we are good to go and we just continue on this path. Uh, I know that was a lot, um, but that's kind of uh, that's kind of how we do it. Um, yeah. Any any questions? I think that's all I have, right? Yeah. Looks like people are considering getting close to grabbing some stickies and throwing some questions up. So let's give them a second. Also, I, for the record, I love SMART goals, and I did draw, I actually made a Miro board defining the acronym, and I've dropped it under board examples. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> I love yeah. them, man. Years and years and years of SMART goals. Close a meeting with a SMART goal, always. <laughs> Shout outs to it. I realized as soon as I said SMART goals that I wasn't going to remember the last, like, three of the letters. Uh, so okay. thank you. We do have a question via the uh, Zoom chat, and it is, how do you use the board in person or exclusively remotely? Um, so that's a good question. Um, hold on, let me go back here. Um, we, we started by doing it kind of um, in as both. Well, so originally this, before we knew about Miro, what we were doing was we would have one laptop that just was facing the whiteboard and it just was such a hassle. Um, so then we did like a mix of like Miro and real world, like, you know, just physical um, stickies. Um, and that worked really well for a while, but then we got to the point where 
um, it was just easier and faster for all of us to use Miro, at least up until we started the solution sketching. Um, and so yeah, now now we use Miro pretty much exclusively until we get to that to that area. Very good. Here's another one for you, uh, Matthew. Can you point out specific areas where Miro was super useful, the aha moments? Um, I think um, for me, the, the how might we notes was so crucial. Um, and uh, well, both of these, like the discovery board and the how might we notes, um, Melissa kind of touched on this in her piece, but I really was like the chief sticky officer and there would be, this is, this looks like a lot on this matrix, but it, that's like nothing. We had some that were like twice as much. And so it was so much effort to go and digitize those and to um, just take those out of the meeting and, and yeah, just try to organize everything. So it was nice that we could do the grouping together and um, yeah, I think that for me, that was it. And then, like I said, we had a camera pointed at the whiteboard and our CEO was constantly like, can you like hold it up closer? I can't see it. And so just like giving him the ability to, to edit things um, as we went was, was big for us. Oh, that sounds cool. Um, we got a couple more coming in and I think we'll just keep hitting you with questions as long as yeah. we have a couple of minutes left. So uh, how do you source users for user testing during the design sprint, given your tight timelines? Sure. Um, uh, so uh, the easiest answer is to use other employees. Um, we do that a lot. Um, the longer answer is we use a sort of resource called Ethneo um, and they basically can source for us really quickly and then we use a service called Look Back um, to record those sessions and uh, and have those available. Nice. Uh, I'll, okay. I'll drop those links on the board too because that's pretty cool. I'm gonna check that that is, yeah. Thanks, Kyle. Um, okay, so uh, looks awesome. Did you factor in the copy during the sketching, or was that provided via branding? That's a great question. Um, so before we we have a we have a UX writer now. Um, before that, um, we were kind of just winging it. Um, ultimately, once we got to the mock-up phase, we would always have a brand um, person come in and, and and look at their writing and the copy. Um, but now we have a UX writer in the room um, during these sprints, and so she looks at them as we go. Neat. Okay. Um, what are your current top three challenges when running these remote design sprints? <laughs> um, I think all of, I, it would be really nice to be able to run the entire sprint within the board. Um, still having to rely on physical paper for the crazy eights, um, the solution sketching, all of that. Um, that, would, that would be nice. Um, I think, I mean, that's, that's really the main one. Other than that, I mean, it really does accomplish what we want to, um, again, I kind of mentioned this with the sticker voting, but it would be really nice to be able to vote on specific parts of, of things rather than just the item on the, on the board. Yeah, I know when you were showing your example of the stickies, how everyone was kind of drawing very graphically based what you want it to look like, that'd be a little tough to do in Miro's uh, yeah. voting system right now. What would you vote on, the sticky or the graphic? And Yeah, it, it's tough. Um, but there is something to be said for this kind of like heat map um, sticker voting process. Um, so... I don't know I mean, how to solve that really. You could always re if you were working graphically, you could give people little dots. Um, later on in our uh, user group here, we've got some surveying to do using a drag and drop for a dot system. So you could easily do that too. Yeah. It'd be very visual. Yeah, and so that's what that's what this is really is. These are just Miro dots. Um, yeah. Cool. Um, how do you make sure everyone's engaged during a remote sprint? It's hard, um, whoever posted this, it's hard even when I run sprints in person, if people were remote, it'd be 
a bit more of a challenge. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think uh, as the facilitator, um, just constantly checking in with the remote stakeholders uh, it's a problem that we run into as well, especially our CEO. He's so busy um, and he's got all kinds of distractions going on. Um, the, the best thing that we found is that we were just, you know, co just constant check-ins like, hey, do you have anything to add? What do you think of this? Um, but yeah, it's tough for sure. Um, yeah. It's because you're so engaging, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, speaking of your CEO, another question here. You mentioned your CEO comes in and edits as needed. What are these edits and what was the transition like for them to use Miro exclusively? Um, so the example here, some executives love PowerPoint and won't use anything else. And I know that that's true. Yeah. Um, that's not, that hasn't been the, the problem or not really the problem was, it was really just like, how do we get our CEO to um, adopt this? And I think he was looking for an opportunity to collaborate more. And so when this, uh, when this kind of came up, he was, he was interested. Um, when I said that he edits things, it's really um, like adding, adding problems here um, or success metrics. It's really like adding, uh, adding to this first board that, that I was referring to, but he can also add in any like solution sketches and, and things along the way or sticky notes. Nice. And as everyone gets more experience, we start to use it more and more, hey? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. How many people usually get involved in the design sprints for your team? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, it kind of varies from company to company. So ours, um, we have a, a hard limit at 10, not a hard limit, but we try to limit it to 10. Um, and it kind of, we, we want to make sure that every part of the company is represented. Um, so we, we make sure there's at least one engineering representative. Um, oh, sorry. Um, we make sure that we have an insurance expert in the room, um, which is huge because there's so many little, you know, caveats that we have to think about. Um, we, we make sure there's a writer, a designer, uh, a product manager, um, just, yeah, a marketing person. Uh, so we try to just get as many representatives as possible. Um, and really what that does is it, it creates advocates. They can go back to their teams and explain what happened, how we came up with that solution. And from the designer's perspective, it'll, it's great to have people to go and defend your design decisions for you rather than having to, to do it on your own. Cool. All right, last one, because uh, we've hit our time limit here. Unrelated, are you guys hiring designers? Ha ha. Um, yeah, we, we're, we're always hiring designers. Um, we, we just had a product designer start on Monday. Um, yeah, um, I don't know if there's anything posted on the website right now, but um, yeah, shoot me an email. They will, and they'll say, can use Miro, hire me, boss. <laughs> that is a plus. Right on. Thanks a lot, Matthew. I think uh, we'll turn it back over to, uh, to Kyle and he can take us on to the next thing. Aye, aye. Yeah, that was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, let me go ahead and share my screen. And oh boy, here we are. Okay, sorry. Dragged. All right. Um, Dynamite. Also, uh, a couple quick notes. Um, above, Matthew also had a great uh, supplemental <sighs> product or paper that walked through all of the steps he took in more detail with uh, visual aids to also company. So just above the frames in question, feel free to scroll through that for a deeper dive into the topics that he, he picked up. Um, cool. So we're heading into the template share off. Exciting, exciting. This is, I already got my pick. I gave it the, I gave it the rock and roll horns, but uh, there are sticky notes just to the upper left of each of the templates in question. So uh, we're going to open up voting in just a sec. Uh, one vote per person. I think we do about a half hour. Um, the top voted template is going to receive a special highlight from the Miro content team. So Brittany will be following up um, when voting closes out. And yeah, these are awesome though. And like, I'm, I'm just excited to grab, grab hold of some of these and use them and tweak them and, and really employ them. So, so thanks everybody for sharing. Um, 
couple other notes. We're kind of now transitioning to the more open connection, communication, conversation section. So once uh, you go ahead and take a peruse, uh, a cruise through these various templates, just beneath that, we have these two feedback surveys. As John was mentioning, uh, feel free to duplicate or drag one of these dots to the knowledge gained versus degree of knowledge application matrix. Um, we'll just get some feedback. And then as more qualitative feedback, we'll also feel free to grab a sticky note and just drop some suggestions in for the next one, because we're all very much doing this together. And we hope to learn everything we can from this experience to make the next one out even stronger for the community. Um, let's see. Again, I, I think I'm actually going to take a dig through the icebreaker because it's going to be super fun to start to connect with folks who are up here. So feel free to drop um, comments and replies. And Brittany will also be following up with an email, I think in a day, a couple days, that will include a recording, a Zoom recording of this session, um, an additional survey that we can actually drill into the data, get some uh, get some good hard hard metrics and also a big shout out to distributed 2019 which is coming up it's a virtual summit for Miro uh, Brittany's headed it up I don't know if you want to talk about it at all but it's gonna be dope I'm gonna that's my next big frontier I'm gonna hit so yeah. thank you um, yeah. yes in the follow-up email I will be talking about distributed 2019 um, just like this meeting it's completely virtual so I like to say you don't even have to put on pants I'm glad that most of you did but uh, it's going to be really great. We have great speakers from Amazon. We're getting one from Slack coming. Um, you'll hear people from Miro speaking. And we also have a really great Slack community where people are sharing how they're using Miro. They're sharing how they're, you know, um, working in design product. Um, it's going to be a really great event. So I'm excited to share that with everyone. So I'll definitely be sharing that with you in the email that you get tomorrow. I'm on top of it. So you'll get that email tomorrow. Thank you. And, and this board will stay up for about a week or so, Brittany? Um, I'll leave it up or until, yeah, um, until about Wednesday, just so people can dig in, look at it, and then I'll start uh, taking you guys out of this board to prepare us for the next user group. Perfect. Any, any closing thoughts before we um, kind of head into our own semi-autonomy? I'd love to hear from any of the people that haven't been speaking because they haven't been presenting. I just want to hear kind of uh, some key takeaways that you had from this meeting. Anything interesting? I have one. Okay. I'm Thanks. not used to using the vote. This is Tanya Janelle. I'm not used to using the vote. I've never used that before. And I don't know if I was doing it right because I was tapping the board and I didn't get any feedback. So I don't know. I, if, if I am doing it right, I would suggest that there's some kind of feedback that shows that your vote was registered. So you're not like tapping the board and stressing that like nothing happened. Yeah, that's actually, as soon as the first voting kicked in, I had the thought, oh, maybe we should have shown how to do this. <laughs> uh, but it is, if you see in the, um, actually I'll just hit it right now. You, you click the, uh, the voting icon, it'll show you what is currently active and then vote now and it'll take you to the area in question so here we are and then it's kind of got your shape so then i click the appropriate area so yeah that that is a good good feedback i'm yeah, gonna absolutely. share my screen so no spoilers you don't see what i vote for <laughs> <laughs> thank you for that yeah yeah for sure yeah um and hey this is rahul i actually have a small bit of feedback like just piggybacking off of what Anya said I had the same problem. I figured it out eventually, but the reason that I had a problem was that I usually have that bar minimized so that I can see more of my mirror. So I couldn't even see that there was voting going on in that bottom bar over there. So you Thank might you. want to ask people to expand that in the bottom left. Okay. Thank you. Duly noted. Yeah, that's good feedback. Thank you. Anybody else? good looks like we're good um holly so we're gonna leave the voting on for 30 minutes yeah we got a half hour set up okay good so let's vote on these um whoever wins like kyle said i will be reaching out to you 
um, because we'll uh, definitely feature you in our community newsletter that goes out monthly. And then our content team likes to do sometimes like social posts. Um, and we do have a template library. So if this is super popular and used, we will absolutely ask you if we can add this template to our template library so other Mira users can absolutely use it. But this is awesome. So thank you. And let's all connect on LinkedIn. We have names. You see our people. Yeah, are. awesome. <laughs> <Let's>. <laughs> Tanya, I already saw yours. I'm yeah, already. I know. I'm like, ooh, awesome people who love Miro. I'm so happy. <laughs> you found your tribe. Hello. Awesome. All right. Well, it was a true pleasure, everybody. And I uh, look forward to whoever chooses to host the next. I'll, I'll definitely be there in attendance. So. Awesome. Great to meet you all. And thank you so much for, for sharing that all your work with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right. Thanks, thanks everybody. Everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you.